There is now a robotic arm that is actually a masseuse. And this robot might soon come to a clinic or spa near you. This is a machine level robotic arm, but it's equipped with artificial intelligence, computer vision, and a haptic feedback response system. So this robot should be able to, you know, find your back, see where it is, find those spots that you're supposed to massage. Then when it finds that spot, it just gets in there with that soft silicone tip. Now I will say the coolest thing about a robotic masseuse is it should bring the price down. I don't know what the price on this thing is, but let's say it's like 15 grand or something and you can just knock these out all day long and you don't have to pay for an employee. You know, so it might be good if it shows up in places where there's not already a massage therapist, but I don't know about this one. It might take me a while before I'd be comfortable. Enough about that massage vending machine. Now let's talk about a robot that can play soccer. So MIT's Artificial Intelligence Lab has just come up with a very cool robot called Dribblebot. Now this four-legged robot can dribble a soccer ball just like a human can, maybe even better than some humans. And just like a human, it can actually play soccer on all sorts of different surfaces. Mud, gravel, sand, snow, you name it. Now to make this robot perform better in the real world, they made a simulated version and had it play, you know, millions or thousands of games of soccer until it learned how to keep the ball right in front of it. So at first, these little four-legged synthetic virtual creatures just bumped into the ball, but as time went on and it kept rewarding them for times they kept the ball in front of them, it slowly developed this ability and now it's been transferred into the real world. But if you think soccer playing robots are cool, I have got a hand that knows what it's grabbing for you. So MIT researchers have just made this really cool robotic hand, but it is truly special. I have not seen anything like this yet because this hand has an ability to understand the texture of the object that's in it, the weight of the object in it, can move it around a little bit with its fingers and determine what it is without computer vision. So we're not talking about a vision system here. It's like being blindfolded and just feeling the object and knowing what it is. So it's designed a little bit like the human hand where there's a hard inside layer like our bone and then a soft structure on top of it. And then there's lots of little sensors that are embedded in the skin layer all over the place so it can feel in different ways what it's holding. Okay, so let me tell you how this is trained. So you put an object in the hand, it takes a guess as what it is. Then there is a computer vision system used just during training to take a photograph, identify what the object is, and then train the system so next time it's put in the hand a little bit different or it's held with more of the fingertips or more of the palm it just keeps trying and trying and trying correcting its own error by seeing the photograph after and it's to the point now where it's right about 85 percent of the time after just one grab think about where this is going when these kind of hands are on robots they could be in like elder care places where they need to hold someone's hand or then hold a table and get the right grip you know so we're starting to see over the horizon a world where you can walk up and shake the hand of a humanoid robot and it's going to know just how to do it right. Okay, so when you put a neural network, an artificial intelligent brain inside of a drone, there's always been a couple things that have gone wrong. But now researchers have come up with a new system called Liquid Neural Networks that's actually changing the game. So a group of smart folks at MIT were training drones to get to a target through complicated forest. And to achieve success in all these kind of random new situations that the drone kept finding itself in, they came up with something called the Liquid Neural Network. And surprisingly, what makes it so successful is that it's able to help the drone forget where it just was. When you hear liquid neural network, think that it actually cuts down the long-term memory and makes it think more in the moment. But it worked. It helps the drone basically run more on instinct or quickly make a decision and not get too caught up with all the things that it's seen before. So imagine soon maybe we can put liquid neural networks in all sorts of robotic creatures that mimic insects and fish and things that don't have all the basically brain baggage that humans do. Like this new robotic beast that can handle both land and the sea. So you know some animals can just quickly switch between walking, crawling, and swimming? Well, there's a new type of robot on the market and it uses something called a bistable actuator. So at its core, it's got a spring that can kind of make it pop or jump, but when you give it an electrical current in just such a way, it can change the shape of that spring. And then the whole thing itself is wrapped in a soft rubber. And that means that this robot now has like these bendy parts that can walk on land, but then if it walks into the water, it can detect that change, put an electric signal through the springs changing their shape, and then the action it takes looks more like swimming. In fact, this little robot can straight up just go from leg to propeller. And guess what else? This kind of robot is super durable and tough. And if it gets like stepped on or run over by a bike, just a little bit of electric charge and then boom, pops right into whatever form factor it wants. And it doesn't need to carry that big of a battery because it only needs a little bit of electric charge to change the shape of the spring. So if you want something that's less like insect bug kind of thing and more like a cute, adorable robot that can talk to you, you might be interested to know that the brain of ChatGPT has now been uploaded to the robotic dog spot. So now Boston Robotics has got their hands 
on some special versions of ChatGPT, basically GPT-4 created by OpenAI, and they've started uploading them to their phenomenally flexible Atlas and Spot robots. And so far, people seem to like the humanizing aspect of ChatGPT inside this form factor, and they say Spot looks less like a killer military robot and more like an adorable, cuddly little pet. Now, even though the output of ChatGPT is in the brain of the dog, they're using another tool, which is Google's text-to-speech software. So coming soon, ChatGPT can also export code as a response. So it won't be that long until it can correlate rollover to the exact code that it would need to actually put into the system that actually moves the actuators to make the dog roll over. And it's only gonna get better and better. All right, so now Spot's like smarter than every human on earth and it's cuter, so we're screwed. But even if we essentially become the dogs to AI, at least they're working on some new agriculture robotics to help feed us. So researchers from North Carolina University have come up with a new robot called AngleNet. And that's a very accurate name because what it does is it goes around in cornfields and it looks at the angle of every leaf. And if you're thinking like, who cares what angle the leaves are at? I'll tell you. Because the sun is always in a predictable location, if you know the angle of the leaf, you can make a prediction about how much energy through photosynthesis it's expected to produce. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. So by literally looking at all the leaves and how they're angled, knowing the calculations of where the sun is, knowing how many leaves there are total and where they're located on the farm, you can actually figure out a lot about what your crop's gonna look like. And most important, it's about breeding because if you have the right plants that are like the most full leaves, they tend to find the angle of the sun the best, those are the ones to breed with the other ones like that so you get stronger and stronger crops over time. And don't forget, people were actually paid to do this by hand before, so it is way faster. Look, and this thing is solar powered, it's on wheels, so you just put it out on the farm and it just measures and measures and measures. Meet Tychobot the robot that China built to go into space. So astronauts on China's space station will soon have a new robotic friend called Tychobot. And this little humanoid robot has been designed to help out with all things related to space tasks. It's super lightweight, it has a dual arm system, which means it can do things like hammer with one hand and then hold all the equipment in the other. Now the idea is that Tychobot will actually work alongside the Chinese astronauts, helping them out with stuff like holding the equipment or taking photos of the work that they're doing. So it was built to be more of a collaborative collaborative robot than it was a replacement. So now let's talk about OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT and GPT-4, because they just made a big investment in a robotics company. So OpenAI has just made a large investment in a Norwegian robotics company called 1X. Now this is interesting because they have really nailed the top of the line artificial intelligence when it comes to software. And because it's so versatile, it makes you wonder if that when you put this into a new form factor, if you're quickly gonna have some incredible breakthroughs. And it's also really interesting because it positions OpenAI in a position where they could become big competitors to Tesla in a way that they never would have before. So this company 1X, they've already built a wheeled robot called Eve, but actually they're going for a full humanoid robot that's called Neo coming soon. And with this new funding from OpenAI's startup fund and presumably all of the OpenAI ecosystem. So the Azure supercomputer that Microsoft donated to train these models, OpenAI's incredible PhD and all of the new talent that they've been sucking up in these last few months. And of course, the feedback data from something like ChatGPT might really put them in a position where they can edge out above some of their competitors, even though it seems like they were a nobody last week. I mean, I could definitely see robotics kind of over the horizon at this point. Somebody is gonna capture a big market. Smash that subscribe button.